candy can be found in all the working vending machines in the base game of Seven Days to Die, for a base price of 100 dukes each. Most of them offer good temporary buffs that you can use to give yourself an edge in some niche within the game, but they are not created equally. So in this video I'm going to be ranking the 11 candies from worst to first based on my opinion from my experience. Oh, and we won't be counting Recog or Fort Bites in this video, those are drugs, not candy. They don't give you food, they reduce your water, and they do not spawn in vending machines. They are closer to steroids than they are rockbusters. Let's get started with the worst candy in 7 Days to Die, Covert Cats. Covert Cats are listed as giving you 50% more sneak damage, but this is not as good as it may initially seem. Rather than taking your total sneak damage and multiplying it all by an extra 50%, the way that many other candies work, instead it just adds 0.5 to your current sneak attack modifier, so if your sneak attack modifier is 1.5, it will go up to 2. It honestly only nets you something like 10 more damage on an attack that should already be doing upwards of 100 damage, and on even weaker attacks, it's going to be even less valuable. It's just very, very weak due to being additive, and sneak attacks are the most niche damage boosts provided by any of the candies, so I just don't think it's worth wasting the dukes, or more importantly, your inventory space on. To have these lying around to boost your damage by like 10 points for 5 minutes, when doing a specific kind of attack that doesn't even work under certain circumstances, and only works with certain weapons, for example sledgehammer do not have a sneak attack modifier. So for all of that, this was a very easy one to place at the very worst of all the candies in the game. Next up we have Eye Candy. Eye Candy gives you 5 more loot stage and then increases your total loot stage by 10%. This is okay, but loot stage is a very fickle thing. Loot stage governs what you find in loot, with there being certain milestones to hit before you can start looting certain items. The problem with Eye Candy is that early on, plus 5 loot stage and 10% boost genuinely won't do anything. Sure, your loot stage might technically be 5 to 10 points higher, but the nearest loot milestone is probably a lot further away than that early on. For example, the first major loot upgrade comes at loot stage 40, and then the next one is loot stage 100. There are a few levels, biomes, and POI combinations where having eye candy will have a chance of getting you actually something noticeably better, but overall it's just not worth keeping on you, it's a very small boost. Boost. And later on at the game past loot stage 300, eye candy doesn't actually benefit you whatsoever, because the loot table kind of just ends around about there, so it's not going to be doing you any good. So it's the only candy that can become completely obsolete, and has so few niche use cases, comes in quite low on my list. Next comes Jailbreakers. Jailbreakers make it so that when you pick a lock, you have a 100% chance to open the container without losing any lockpicks. This is quite nice later on in the game when you find locks and loot. Honestly, lockpicks are pretty cheap and shouldn't be that hard to find. Time charges are also very common in the locked loot containers, so once you've opened one, you can comfortably coast on the time charges and lockpicks you find in those containers. And ultimately, this item forgets about the universal 100% chance lockpick item. It's very rare, you may not have heard of it, it's called a pickaxe. Hit it until it breaks. Now if you're role playing or are playing either a purposefully low strength build or you have player block damage turned down, I can see these being useful for you. But for most of us, most of the time, these just aren't all that helpful unless you find a working vending machine inside the POI with a locked container and it saves you like 10 seconds of lock picking or hitting the crates. Not the worst by any means, just I can can't really put it ahead of anything else on the list. Next up we have Nerd Tats. Now Nerd Tats are also very, very good. What they do is give your shock attacks with a stun baton an AoE radius, turning it into a crowd control weapon. And there's nothing bad about the candy per se, it's just that most people don't use stun baton, and there's another candy that's actually more beneficial for stun batons anyway. So basically, it's not worth having unless you're doing a very specific kind of intellect build on Horde Knight, and for being so specific and rarely benefiting the average player, I can't put it any higher than this. In fact, I'd be willing to bet most people watching this video haven't even used this candy. In fact, I'm also willing to bet that many of you didn't even know what this effect meant when you saw it in the game until I just told you. Not the most impactful item in the game for most of us. Speaking of impact... 
Oh shit drops remove fall damage entirely and they prevent breaking and spraining your limbs from fall damage. The one thing that holds them back is you kinda need to be willing to sacrifice an inventory slot to have them be your personal stash of parachutes. And honestly, how often is fall damage really a problem? How many massive buildings are you just jumping off of in this game? How much time is that saving you versus just running back down the stairs? Is it like 30 seconds? And with all the tall POIs you can just do this to avoid fall damage. So you need the foresight to know you plan on jumping off of buildings or to know that you have a habit of falling off of tall things or perhaps jumping out of your gyrocopter or you have to be so paranoid about that that you're willing to waste an inventory slot on it. I however am none of the above and can't put oh shit drops any higher on this list. Next up Atom Junkies. Now, Atom Junkies are fantastic. They increase your explosive damage by 1.5 at the end. The reason this is in the middle of the list, though, just comes from explosives themselves. They're amazing. Even on insane difficulty, there's very few zombies who will survive an explosive weapon being used on them, and there's almost none who will survive the second. The main issue here is just the explosives are so strong, the candy is just a bit of a waste of money. You don't need it, but it doesn't hurt either. You'll get an extra few kills with each explosive, but it's rarely going to massively affect your hordes, which is another issue. Explosives are one of two things for you, a panic weapon or a horde night weapon. If you're panic throwing an impact grenade into a crowd of seven zombies in the middle of a POI, you don't have time to eat atom junkies. If you're throwing one grenade to kill 17 zombies at once on Horde Night, the candy is only going to net you an extra couple of kills. It's a good candy, but it's just outclassed by the niche uses of explosives and the fact that explosives themselves are so fantastic they just don't need the help, especially if you've already invested in the Demolitions Expert perk. Next we have Sugar Butts. These again are a great candy that decreases the cost of things you buy by 10% and increases the cost of things you sell by 10%. Obviously these are very good for selling and buying items particularly when you're working with very expensive things, though in the grander scheme of things I would say that making money isn't always about just discounts, there are better candies to help you get money if you have to pick between them, which we'll get onto later. We also have Rockbusters next, which is a solid 20% boost to your ore mining, it's like a bonus rank of mother load and there's nothing bad about it whatsoever, next they are just really really good. Next we have Hackers, now Hackers are that better version of Sugar Butts I was talking about, if you're looking to make money it gives you a 20% boost to your salvage yield. You can sell car parts for easy, easy money. I've used that strategy to get motorcycles as early as day 2 in Alpha 20 and it's pretty reliable to do that if you get good luck with your traders. Hackers also benefit crafters who want more components to make various things for their bases and I've put it above rockbusters because salvage is typically harder to come across than just ores or you can pretty much just dig down anywhere and you will find some. There's a small amount of scarcity with salvage salvage parts, for example cars which start to become quite hard to find on multiplayer servers or small maps, and only certain POIs having high quantities of certain scrap items. It just beats out Rockbusters in usefulness in my opinion. The second to last or rather second to first or did that just be second is health bars. Health bars give you 10 more bonus health. This is the only item in the game that gives you a higher maximum health by the way, and also gives you more critical resistance meaning you'll take less critical injuries. This is the only non-armor item in the game that provides this bonus and it gives you 200% critical healing which makes you heal injuries 50% faster and this is the only non-perk bonus in the game which gives this effect and it works on any and all injuries. For example you can use it to take a sprain which usually takes 10 minutes to heal down to just 5 minutes and that's an injury you can't heal any other way. It's also great for reducing the timer on other injuries like broken legs or arms and it works just fine with healing factor. So if you have a health bar and healing factor your sprained leg will go from 10 minutes down to just 2.5 which is much more bearable I'm sure you can agree. A real power item there with a lot of difficult to acquire boosts all wrapped into one pretty cheap and common food item. And finally skull crushers. It increases your melee damage by 50% and this is applied after your other boosts so it's a real 50% boost not like go over it gets. It works for all melee attacks and includes sneak attacks and it really helps make melee weapons much more useful in the early and late game, especially in horde nights where they are typically too weak and too slow in the early and late game respectively. But you can also use it in just normal POIs to reduce your hits to kill by one or two. Great for anyone who uses a lot of melee and of course in the current 7 day 
to that landscape that is most players most of the time. No complaints, the only thing you should know is that it doesn't increase your block damage, just the damage done to enemies and players. So what do you think of this list? What would be your ranking? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, why not check out my skill book ranking video? Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.